one, I hope the lighting is okay, and two, I hope the angle is okay. I guess we are about to find out if I have angled this well, but hello my lovelies, welcome to today's video. I hope you are well. I hope you are doing well. This week I was kind of hoping to try and do a weekly vlog. I'm not the best at weekly vlogs I've come to realise but I really want to try and do it this week because we will be having the first day of October which is very exciting and this is also my first week back at uni. It is my final year, my dissertation year. Thought I would rep, <laughs> rep the uni. Today's plan so far what I've done is, is I got up I went to the gym, I came back and had a shower, I had some breakfast and now I am just packing my backpack because I want to take myself to a cafe somewhere, settle down and do a bit of life admin and really get my ducks in a row for this academic year. I really think this is the perfect time of year to do a reset. The darker half of the year is here, our days are shorter, our nights are longer. Samhain or Halloween as most people know it is just around the corner and if you didn't know Samhain is the witch's new year. I have always felt a little off around new years like the traditional new years and I never quite pinpointed why and long story short I just think we are fighting our natural inner cycles. Our bodies are designed to use the darker half of the year to rest and relax and reflect a little bit on the warmer months and what they brought us and things like that and the darker half of the year starts September October time. I feel like when the weather turns and it gets darker a lot of people get dreary and like down and seasonal depression can hit people really badly. I am one that can get hit, hit pretty badly with it so I wanted to try and start off this autumnal season on a positive note. Speaking of, let's talk about books. <laughs> So I thought uh, September is the perfect time to read like university academic books. If you watched my previous video you would have seen that my current read is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I'm still reading it. I really 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 want to get this done within the next day or two. Um, I'm nearly halfway. I am not struggling to get through it but it's definitely not the quickest read uh, I have read. I really do love Lee Bardugo's writing but it's this isn't a book that you can just read lightheartedly. You do need to pay attention and you know it does use a little bit of brain power to understand what's going on and what's happening because of the kind of magical system that she's brought into it and even knowing the layout of things because it's all set at Yale University so every I keep having to flip back to the map that's at the front of the book trust so I know and understand where I am and what's happening and I don't know it's it's not the fastest read but I am still really enjoying it and I do really want to get this finished within the next day or two so I will definitely be reading some of this today so I can move on to my next book which I already know what I want to read next now. Again if you have watched my autumn book shopping TBR video then you would have seen that I bought the Cinnamon Bun Bookshop by Laurie Gilmore and if you didn't know that is technically the second book in the series but I believe they're interconnected standalones so you don't necessarily have to read the first book but my brain, as soon as I found out that it was like the book two, it says it in the book, it says book two, I was instantly like, okay, I need to read the first one first, obviously. And this is such a staple autumn book, it's absolutely everywhere at the moment. <laughs> so I had to go get it, I had to go pick up the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. I am, I am kind of ready for a more lighthearted read. I think picking up something like this after Ninth House is the right move because Ninth House definitely has some dark themes in it. Um, if you plan to read it I do recommend um, looking up the trigger warnings just in case. But the 
The Pumpkin Spice Cafe was highly inspired by Gilmore Girls. The author, Laurie Gilmore, that's her pen name. Again, highly inspired by Gilmore Girls. So I don't think there's a more perfect book to read at this time of year. My plan is this week, within the next day or two, I really want to finish Ninth House and tick it off my TBR and say that I finally read A Dark Academia. And then I'd love to move on to the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Those are my current reading plans for this week. I now need to get a wiggle on and I want to take myself to a cafe and start getting some admin done, looking at what the next month or so is going to be for me and also get some reading done. It's a gloomy day, it's been raining, it's like the perfect autumnal day, so I don't think I should flabber on any more flabber. That's not the correct word. This. I need to stop doing this and I need to make a move. So let's go do it. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next clip. <laughs> I haven't actually, hang on, let me stop this music. I haven't actually given you any thoughts on this book that I currently have, and I'm about 50% of the way through. I'm on page 222, 222, and I ha literally haven't told you anything about my thoughts and feelings, so maybe I should do that really quickly. Do I, do I should probably also give you a quick summary of what this is about, so. This book follows, well, it's actually a multiple POV book, which I wasn't expecting, but our main character is Alex Stern, um, who is, I think she's 20 years old, and she attends Yale University, but she isn't your stereotypical university student. She is there on the pretense, is that the right word? Is that the right word? She's basically undercover. She's working for this organisation, that's the word, organisation that basically monitors the eight, I want to say, there's eight of them, uh, the eight societies or houses of the veil um, that reside at Yale University. And each house, each society specialise in a different kind of magic that they use to either like their own personal gain or people use them to kind of get ahead in life there's like you know politicians and things that use the society to try and like predict things or you know make things go their way and the i want to say it's called leith or life i'm not exactly how it's pronounced but it's spelled like this and that is the organisation that has basically 
headhunted Alex to work with them because she has this very specific um, and unique power or ability basically makes her quite desirable for their needs despite her not so Yale-ish background. So far the story is basically following her and on the back so this does not this is not a big spoiler but basically with any or uh, not, not with any but with most dark academia books a murder occurs and Alex thinks there is more to this murder than meets the eye. It's basically following her trying to figure out this murder and solve this murder. There are some other things happening on in the background as well but that is the main plot of the book. As I mentioned this is Dura POV which I wasn't expecting and I love a Dura POV book. I think they're just so intriguing, enticing, they make me want to keep reading. Nine times out of ten I'm invested in both or all because you can have multiple POV books but nine times out of ten I'm invested in all of the POVs and usually at the end of a chapter something happens, it's like a mini cliffhanger and then the next chapter you're in a different POV and you're like oh I want to know what happens but then that POV is really interesting and that probably ends on a mini cliffhanger and then you're sent back to the previous POV and it just keeps me intrigued and it keeps me entertained so I am a sucker for a multiple POV book and this book is not disappointing when it comes into that aspect. I am really enjoying both of the POVs that we get. Do I like one POV more than the other? I think I'm intrigued by one more than the other. But again, that's because of what's happening in the book. And it's, oh, it's, the more I think about it, it's actually quite a clever book. <laughs> and I think I'm enjoying it more than I'm letting on. Because it takes a lot of brain power, I think, to kind of read, or the start of this book, definitely you need to concentrate and focus because there's a lot of jargon and words thrown at you, different societies and different names that you need to remember in different locations, and there's only so much the map at the front can do to aid with that kind of thing. So I do think the first 100 pages, they're not difficult to read, but you do need to be focused, you do need to be paying attention. But now that I've gotten past those first 100 pages and the plot really started to kind of kick in a little bit, I th I'm enjoying it a bit more. I think it's currently sitting at like a 3.75. So I'm enjoying it and I'm having a good time. I'm not like on the edge of my seat, like what is going to happen, what's happening. But I'm like, okay, I'm intrigued. I want to see what happens. I think the dialogue is quite good. Um, Lee Bardugo can be quite skillful when it comes to writing ban banty? <laughs> when it comes to writing banterful dialogue, I think she, she knows what she's doing and there is some of that in here which I do enjoy quite a lot. I'm liking the dynamics between the characters in this book as well. Um, there is definitely grey moral characters. It's one of those where it's like are they good? Are they bad? Kind of vibes. I'm enjoying it. Like I said, I'm only about 50% of the way through and I'm really excited to see where the story goes. So I'm going to continue reading now that you know where my thoughts and feelings about Ninth House so far. Have we got ourselves an unreliable narrator? unreliable protagonist. I am <laughs> I am on chapter 19 page 286. Like answers are being given but then it's raising even more questions. Like this like I'm so intrigued and I want to know I want to know what's happening. I have so many questions. And I'm so worried they're not going to get answered in this book because I'm so aware that there's a second book. Mm. I'm, <laughs> I'm intrigued. But I'm also, I just want to reiterate about looking up trigger warnings. Because there is some things that I've read that could have been ten times worse, description-wise. Not the actual events, like they were horrific, but description wise could have been a lot worse 
but they were still very unsettling and not nice to read and have made me feel very like not good so if you do plan to read this book i just want to reiterate reiterate please look up trigger warnings i think there is a trigger warning at the start of the book is there or did i make that up maybe i made that up i made that up there isn't a trigger warning at the start of the book i thought there was but there isn't please look up trigger warnings and please remember this is an adult book this is not ya so there are adult themes but I can handle it. I don't, I think this is also making me realise I could not do like a dark romance. You know how dark romance have had a massive like surgence in the last like year through like TikTok and things. I, I couldn't, I don't think I could do it. I really don't think I could do it because even that, I think this is pretty light compared to maybe probably some of the stuff that goes down in like dark romances and things. So I'm pretty hooked now i'm thinking i'm gonna get quite a chunk of this done this evening which i'm excited about so my candle's just gone out that's sad just means i'm gonna have to go buy another one but anyways i'm gonna keep reading and update you in the next clip lines there are some lines in this book they are mostly coming from our main girly alex but she has got some one-liners and i'm kind of loving them turner rested his gloved hands on the steering wheel i'm pretty sure when my mother was talking about the devil she had you in mind i'm a delight if i said yes what would we need turner already had a nice enough suit you want a briefcase i can borrow one great then all we need is this she pulled the mirror she'd used to gain access to tara's apartment from her pocket you want me to walk into a secure jail with a compact and a nice attache case it's worse than that turner alex flipped the mirror in her hand i want you to believe in magic <laughs> like there are moments like that where i'm like yeah yeah this is this is this is creeped up i think this has hit the four star realm for me now I am very much intrigued, invested. Um, <laughs> our character Alex, she has grown on me a lot. Really enjoying it. And I just want to know more. I am working today, but I don't start work until like half 12. So hence why I'm spending the morning reading. It's my rest day at the gym, so I'm literally just going to spend the morning chilling, reading, and then I'll head to work. So you probably won't see me until tomorrow, but I will give you a reading update when I am back.
I've just taken my hair out of a bun, so I think it's looking a little poofy. But I want to give you a reading update. So if you couldn't tell from the previous clips, I finished Ninth House by Lee Bardugo and my final rating for this is 4.25 stars. I really enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised with how much I ended up enjoying it in the end, especially with how I was feeling near the beginning of the book. It definitely felt a little slower, but I do think that is just because I was like learning the magic system and all the words and all the places. There's a lot of locations that are mentioned in this book where things kind of happen and take place. So once you kind of get past that and get into the plot and the story, it really ramps up and it really picks up and I really, really enjoyed it. And I will definitely be picking up Hellbent at some point. I'm not in a rush to pick it up, but right now I'm kind of happy to put my dark academia down for a little bit because <laughs> um, there are definitely some darker themes that are explored in this book but yeah I really enjoyed it. I ended up really warming to our main character Alex. I really warmed to her a lot. I think progress or journey her character takes is it's kind of hard to put into words but she doesn't have the easiest background and seeing her basically be a little bit of a fish out of water in her environment and how she adapts to it and adapt to the people around her and the friendship she makes, things like that, just watching her go through this journey. I really enjoyed it. I really, I can't say I connected to her because I I can't really relate to her character much because I haven't gone through what she's gone through but I can definitely relate to the feeling of being a little bit of a fish out of water not really being in your element and I think Lee Bardugo just wrote a very strong character I think Alex is a very strong character and I don't know she really grew on me I wasn't the biggest fan at first I didn't dislike her but I just wasn't really gelling with her but she grew on me a lot. She grew on me a lot. And I'm definitely looking forward to reading Hellbent and continuing the story with her. So yeah, 4.25 stars, really recommend it. I do think this is a good starting point for Dark Academia if you've never read it before. Um, like I said, there are dark themes in it that are explored, but they don't go into too much detail which is appreciated, especially as someone like me who doesn't really like that kind of thing. Um, it was just the right amount of like unsettling and disturbing, which was kind of what I was looking for. So yeah, I do really recommend it if you haven't picked it up already. I have jumped into my next, I didn't jump into it straight away. So I did take a couple of days break reading um, before moving on to my next book and I started this book last night. I started it last night and I'm already on page 145. The last time I whizzed through a book like this it was an Ally Hazelwood. So I think that says a lot but if you couldn't tell from the previous clips I have started The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Laurie Gilmore. I am enjoying this so much. I'm gobbling it up. Is it, is it, again, it's giving me Ali Hazelwood vibes. More of the fact that it's not super in-depth writing. If you're looking for a very detailed, like hard-hitting story, these aren't the books for you, obviously. But if you're looking for a light-hearted romance, a feel-good romance where... The plot isn't too serious, it's definitely more character driven, then this is definitely the way to go. And this is the perfect book for the season. It's set in October and I'm now reading it in October. I wasn't actually too sure what this book was about before I started reading it. I've just done what everybody else has done and just jumped on the bandwagon straight away. But I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it at all because I'm enjoying it so much. 
the writing style is just so easy to read it flows so easily it is literally Gilmore Girls in a book so if you like Gilmore Girls you should definitely pick this up um I really like our main character Jeannie I believe it's Jeannie yeah Jeannie um and I'm really liking the MMC which is I was gonna say Noah it's not Noah Logan I think Noah's the love interest of the cinnamon bookshop but Logan is our MMC and he is like the farmer of Dream Harbour so Dream Harbour is like the town that this is all set in I didn't realize but there's actually a map a hand-drawn map at the front of the book with all the places drawn out and it just looks so cute so up here you've got Logan's farm and then on Main Street, so this middle street here, you've got all of the like shops and cafes. Um, so you've got the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. And then at the end of Main Street, you've got the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore, which is obviously the second book that's been released in this series. Up here, oh, you've got the Christmas Tree Farm, which I know is a book that's coming out, I think, this month or next month. I looked it up on Goodreads, but it's either this month or next month but the christmas tree book farm is being released and then she's already got um it's actually in the front of this book the strawberry patch pancake house is also being released and look the pancake house is right there i just oh this just is just the coziest feel goodest book i was gonna say ever that's a bit dramatic but feel good cozy vibes light-hearted rom-com Ness. if that is what you're looking for then definitely pick this book up i'm having the best time reading it just being curled up in a blanket drinking pumpkin spice chai tea i'm just loving it i'm loving it so much especially after reading ninth house i knew i was going to need a more of a light-hearted read after reading ninth house this was definitely the right thing the right pick because of how quickly i'm getting through this book i probably see me feeling finishing this in the next day or two so I will probably just update you when I'm finished with it which I think is going to be pretty soon I literally just want to stop talking and go read it so that's what I'm going to go do <laughs> this is the third time I've tried filming this outro <laughs> I cannot get my camera angles right I'm really hoping I've got this a bit better but I just wanted to quickly pop on and wrap up this reading vlog with my final thoughts on The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lauren Gilmore. I rated this book 4.5 stars. I ate it up. I read it in 24 hours. The only other time I've done that has been with an Ally Hazelwood. So I think it's safe to say that I have found my autumnal Ally Hazelwood rom-com author, which I'm so happy about. I'm so excited about it. Oh, it was just the perfect pick-me-up after reading something darker like Ninth House. It was just exactly what I needed. So Gilmore Girls-esque. It's literally, it's basically a copy and paste of Gilmore Girls, but in the best way possible. I loved all the characters. I thought they were fun and quirky and I just I just felt like I was part of Dream Harbor when I was reading this book. I just felt like one of them. And it was just so nice to see this little close-knit community that they have as just think Gilmore Girls and the closeness they have in Stars Hollow, you basically get in Dream Harbor. There is a little bit of spice near the end of the book, just to give you a bit of a heads up. But it was just exactly what I needed. I really liked our two main characters. I thought they bounced well off each other. It's classic grumpy sunshine trope, which I really enjoyed. Duo POV, I love a good duo POV as well. So yeah, it had all the ingredients for a good fast paced rom-com. So if you're a fan of Ali Hazelwood and if you're a fan of Gilmore Girls, then definitely pick this one up if you haven't yet. So I'm sorry if this outro is a little bit rushed because I do need to get going and this was the only chance I had to wrap up this vlog but thank you so much for joining me at, on this cosy autumnal reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a fabulous autumnal season so far. Let me know in the comments below what you're currently reading. I would love to know are you a seasonal reader or do you do more mood reads? I would love to hear and yeah. 
I think that is everything. So I'm going to get going. Thank you again. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.